everyone gets everything he wants. I wanted a two door, and for me sins, they gave me one. Brought it up to me like room service. It was a real choice mission. Rust everywhere. And when it was over, I'd never want another. Welcome to episode five. Well, welcome to the jungle. Welcome to Project Bramble. Episode 5, more welding coming up. Another uh, big time mission on the front end of the car. Let's take you in and see what we've got going on. Starting with a nice clean workshop with the parts laid out there. Look at that. That's nice. Don't you like it? A battery tray there we picked up off eBay. 25 quid. A magnum panel one. You can get them. I think they're still making them even. Okay, so we've got that. Let's see what else we get. A piece of repair section off the Portuguese donor car. Brilliant. We've cut that and profiled it ready to go. Then we've dipped it in there. Some phosphoric acid. Here it is. The Fos Clean from Rust Buster. I diluted it down. Using it neat can be dangerous. You've got to be ventilated for this stuff. Outside only, please. Don't use that indoors dangerous stuff but very effective that was all rusted inside jet washer on it I put the jet washer after that still a little bit on it but it's uh, took it down good enough for me to get clean welds offering it up to the repair area of the c-section chassis offside so we're gonna get some welds on that some tacks first and just get it lined up we'll tap about feel it flush Let's see what we can do. Uh, tools out in nice storage box makes life a lot easier if you have your storage boxes just uh, there like that. Dust all your tools down at the end of the day makes it easier. Nice pair of grips there. They're really good ones, those lock jaw types. Automatic uh, pressure on those. Handy. Gloves are on and then using those jaws and lock the, the profiled piece of donor metal. We took our time making sure that cut was right so that when the welder comes in there's less work to do lined up because that section was damaged if you looked on the previous video needed a whole piece replacing really it was pitted so from the other side grip that let's just see how we're looking and then we'll feel for it being flush there's a lot of F's there weren't there feel for it being flush here we go, so, look at this, can that fit in nicely, I think that it can, it's looking okay, okay, keep going on that please, check, check and check again, always, a little bit of paint to take off that red paint. I wonder if I do take that off. I think I do. I'll just weld straight over it. I think so. So from the other side, then get we need to get some tacks on now. Going for our new gloves, some SWPs. These are slightly thinner glove. A bit easy to manoeuvre your hands with these, but not as robust for serious. Um, if you're fabricating RSJs on a metal working site, they wouldn't last. But for light duty use, you get a bit more feel through your hands on them gloves I have got a, a more industrial pair not as easy to manoeuvre so I like them so it's a thumbs up for the gloves comfy let's get on and get some tacks in on this see what we can do with this one tacks on can release the grip just feeling for the, uh, the level and the flushness of it use the face of the hammer to feel any bumps another tack in welders on position two or even actually it's on three because this is thicker metal a 
I'm on a Sealy welder turbo 200 I think it's called we'll have a look at the welder later on in that goes we just need to move along the section check check again then once you're happy in go the tacks keep the tacks spaced apart for now anyway that helps with the heat dissipation we want to get the panel level first anyway back in with them uh, the auto lock jaw grips nice with those pads on the end see those pads with a little swivel pivot point on the pads you can get you can get cheap grips and they've got the place as well just depends on the job it is nice to have some quality tools around And those little shoes on the end of the grips there can help with leveling stuff up and check with the hammer face there's a few ways you could do that chisel hammer anything flat it's a visible item as well in the engine bay you want this to be right you want everything to be right but especially this when you're staring down in your engine bay at this we want to make it like that chassis legs a seamless repair so in for another tack then no problem with that you can bridge over a little bit you learn the technique for for bridging across gaps I could have got a slightly tighter cut perhaps there but it's not bad we'll certainly do what we need the weld will fill in all that nicely missed that one there we go we'll get better it's quite a bit of time spent with this clip on this repair let's just get plenty of welds going don't you like welding it's great fun when you get when you can get moving now start getting a few down there's a little bit of you see where that cut is there it's slightly proud that one's knocking in so we'll, we leave that bit till last that's area wants uh, a little bit of help it's cut right shape it's just a little bit in so we'll straighten that and we'll get it Gonna just put a few more on and then the idea is once you've got all your tacks in position you start in fill in between them you can get you can start getting continuous weld runs in then as well if you want I find pulsing the welder helps with a, a weld run stops you it burning through you kind of like get a feel for the pool the weld pool and you can see it just ends up like a pulsing glow as you pulse on your trigger of your welder and I like to draw back and pull the pool along there's a few techniques we'll learn them as we go we're going to get better and better as we progress on this build so I think we'll speed up the film a little bit for you just to save some time away we go Okay, that little area there. See those wire tangs on top of the chassis leg, just above that, the bush mount hole. They're going to need replacing. They're they're pretty thin. They're the wiring harness fold down tangs that hold your loom in place. Mustn't forget to change them. They're shot, so it's thumbs up because we're done. To go round the inside and see the weld through there we can add a little bit this side as well if we want if we feel it's not penetrated enough or 
it's not strong enough we add a little bit to it and also we'll see we're bound to see pinholes so I probably spend some time with that now cleaning it up here's our flap wheel again and the mask on full face mask oh I think like the fumes might have got to me yeah they've gone I'm gone I've lost the plot yeah lost the plot I think I was just messing around there right flap wheel four and a half inch on on this grinder takes the heads off the welds nicely as we discussed in part four but as again as I said watch you don't over thin the metal it's really that is the really the, the trick try and get it so that the second it's gonna be flush the uh, the nugget of the weld then come away and use the finger sander if you want quite relaxing to do gloves are on and that vibration issue I've not had it since well thanks for all the comments on that by the way everyone on YouTube who supported us on that uh, hand tingling situation we were using the angle grinder with the wire cup wheel and it shook the hell out of my hands and tingled them and it's not done it since I've not used that actual tool it's just a question of vibration which you've got to be wary of you can get some gloves that suppress it a little bit I'm just not going to use that any tool that's not balanced or heavy vibration I'm not going to use I'm not having my hands tingling okay these have been cleaned up in the acid as well just to get the insides of them clean really the outside doesn't concern me that much as soon as you take them into the air as well they'll rust straight away because it's only phosphoric it's only to eat the rust and then it needs treating afterwards it's, it's had a good go at dissolving all that you can see a repair panel as well that I fitted that's another flush fitting panel we had to repair the bottom of this section because it was damaged what we're going to do to finish it off the lower edge there needs some spot welding imprints it's, it's already welding on but I'm going to make it look a bit more original and put some spot welds in there so that repair piece has gone in and I've ground it back this is this mounts the lower subframe and it fits to that chassis leg you just saw me repairing we've been in with the finger sander and blended that piece of metal in the little piece there I'm pointing out needs get, just getting out that's the last repair once a little bit of weld and another file down just in that corner and a bit more dressing up and that that's done there but it was a bit rough that piece it but it's the best I could find again Portuguese donating once all cleaning back we don't want to see any rust on it at all by the time we're done but I thought let's get them spot welds in well it was on my mind just so that when you look at that it looks like it's uh, all one piece one continuous run the other spot welds have been drilled out there they'll have to be re-plugged in I was actually going to split this thing apart to repair it but I decided I could repair it without doing that so I gave up drilling the spot welds cleaning up the inside of the c-section chassis where we've added some more welds probably put them in because you could see through it so we just go over the welder and then this uh, I call it a croc sander but I've been told it's a finger file which is, suits it better I think you get quite a detailed view there the camera's able to focus in quite nicely you won't see it as effective as you would do because I'm holding it with one hand so you normally put a bit more pressure on that even the Portuguese donor section of metals on its way to being pitted you can see there so and that's a, that was a solid car so I mean there'll be cars on the road that have got all this and you don't even know it 
um, them belts that I'm using are from Screw Fix, and that area that you can see on your screen now would use a belt up easily, if not two belts. So you soon blow through the belts. They're 60 grit belts, and they'll last. You can hear my cat crying now because he wants his dinner. Okay, this is a rust converter. Great stuff. Again from rust.co.uk. FE123. Just molecularly converts rust to an inert substance. It's good stuff. I rate it over Q Rust. Q Rust is very weak compared to this. So I'm going into that uh, chassis section area because we can't get in any more than that. I mean, it has been dipped in the acid tank when the car went in, but I still feel that it needs more treatment. I mean, it has done a good job, the acid tank, but it can only go so far. And this was particularly rusty, so they did well to get this much off, actually, because all inside them chassis legs are clean. It's just where you get the chassis mount points, where it's jammed, jammed rust in into the crevices. And that's the, you can't always guarantee they're going to get it all out. It's not going to dissolve a big pile of rust that's jammed and wedged in. And that's what would have happened uh, on that uh, circular mount point. There was no need to paint it all over the things you should just paint this on rust only so you can see it's, wherever the rust was it starts to slowly chemically convert it or molecularly convert it inert back to inert it's very good stuff so we're going to carry on getting the alignment now you can see the camera's just going through making a little bit of a an effect through there so I can see a face there so we're mocking up them lower repaired now fully repaired now uh, front cradle mount point brackets that fit on the C section of the chassis just making sure they're starting to get a rough idea of the alignment that's what we want to really do. So the camera takes us round so we can see the work so far. Bit of that C section that we grafted in. Need to get those um, chassis sections totally straight. This is the well through primer that we're going to be using. Another product from Rust Buster. I like this stuff. It's a two part affair, two part, two uh, mix, two part pack, two pack, two two mix affair. 60 oof the mix is uh, 10 parts to 6 parts and it's quite thin stuff but it's uh, got a very low burn back pretty effective well through primer a lot better than the spray on stuff checking out where we're going to need to apply it so just chiseling away at that rust just getting it so it's all clean inside you'll see some of the the uh, converted rust has gone inert. We'll do a bit more cleaning up inside there, and again, the car's going back in anyway into the into the solution, so it'll get even more off. But we just we don't want to see any rust, you know. We can get rid of it all. One of the welds there, that's just on the that's fixing a few. I think that was on one of the runs on the um, near side actually could be offside there actually we're close up on the camera I'm not quite sure where that bit is it was one of the continuous weld runs anyway it's got to be a uh, driver's side front chassis like that hasn't it no it's not it's offside it was, a, it was a repair so we're grinding that back flap wheels on again we keep seeing that flap wheel um, I don't know how much mileage you get out of the flap wheels I change them quite a lot mask again great that 3m mask the two cartridges that detach at the side twist and turn various grades of cartridge you can get depending on the job that you're doing these are a mid mid range you can see the stamping number on them I don't actually know what you class those as down to so many parts per million of filtration whatever it is great mask clean it every now and again 
just put it in the sink, warm water, uh, soapy water, and it all dissembles and cleans back up. Thumbs up for the mask. Door open on the unit because the weld through, when you start mixing the weld through primer, the fumes are dangerous. So it's mask on and the, uh, the garage door open. We don't take any chances. You don't want to be breathing this in. You may ask how do you use it, but this is how you use it in a ventilated area with a mask on. It is good stuff. It's very thin, but I think that's the idea. So in it goes behind all the seams. And the idea will be that the welder will burst through it. Although I'm not sure if we should clean each plug hole up so that the welder gets an instant arc. I don't know how effective it is to push through this. I mean, it's a zinc. I'm taking it's a zinc or it's a metallic com uh, component to the primer, which would help to conduct the the arc. However, um, I think I would be rather cleaning up each plug weld. Round, I go. We go again. This whole idea would ensure that once you can't get access to the, the joins between the panels, that they at least got some paint on them. They will be getting other rust treatment on them as well when the car's finally finished but it's best just to cover all bases there's an area of crash damage I marked an X on it with a yellow pen just gone past it again there it's got to come out that inner wing has had an accident in its time the car's had a bit of a beating really because it had a new quarter uh, near side uh, a crash impact offside so it's had a bit of a beating in its life, this car. So you can see how that's just pickled. There's nothing left of that uh, scuttle end. Not much left of that front end uh, there, where the scuttle joins the inner wing. And you can see, just gone past it again, where you can see from here, it's, it's crimpled. So that's had a little stove in the front in its life. Although it was never showed signs of that off the wing, but it could have had a new wing, of course, probably did. Um, so we're going to have to take it out so we've took a line, there it goes, it's out just do uh, uh, the one mil slit in this straight down take that piece, it's useless, there's nothing you can do with it, it's gone, there's no point thinking about it, just slice it out if you've got the part to put in it get it in so we go to the Portuguese shell and grab an oversized section, just a little bit bigger than that piece and then we'll use a strip of metal off this as a profile cut You'll see what we do in a minute so when we get it. Here's some more holes in the again in the C section. This side, this time we're uh, offside. Sorry, we're near side. I'm always going to get that mixed up. We're near side chassis front, and we're going to use this copper plate at the back and then fill that with MIG. So clamp the copper plate on. This is a piece of copper, flat copper bar, which you can buy anywhere. Um, Frost do do it as well. If you want to get uh, a copper pad bar, from, they do a mag mount one as well. So you can clamp that on from the back and then weld in at the top and then pull your weld round. And for pinholes, it's quite good. It's quite a good technique because the weld will not stick or fuse or um, weld to the copper. It just bounces off it. So what you can do is, if you want to, you can fill holes in metal to a degree anyway uh, I wouldn't uh, really recommend it for very large areas but you'll see that we've as an experiment just to see how it worked I'd never done this technique before not properly anyway and I found it quite good I found it quite surprising how it worked I didn't expect it to work that good we should see us flat down now well there's a nugget in we need to get that flat down and there's also to the front of it some more pinholes so we need to do the same if this works we'd do the same there there we go, putting a bit more in. Now this is probably just filling in the pinholes that were remaining. You can get it 90% and you have to go back and just finalise. It's looking quite good actually that. So there's a couple more pinholes that I would have spotted, but we've flattened that down and it starts to disappear. Would you believe that's the same piece of metal? How good was that? There's one more pinhole left, but that's a pretty good idea. If you don't want to start uh, making sections or you can't actually do it for whatever reason there's the copper bar in fact this one did have the magnets on it although I don't use the magnet I found them not powerful enough the magnets so I used to, use to clamp it up needle file in uh, finger file sorry I'm gonna get that right that's the finger file 
you'll find for one operation that will use the entire belt so you need loads of belts I mean if you're gonna buy them buy a big box full because for that nugget that we're grinding there that will do at least two or three belts to do that would you believe sounds crazy but it's true depends on the type of belt actually the quality of the belt I recommend buying a good quality finger fi uh, file if you've got an air gun get an air gun one this is an electric one but there's one made by Silverline it's no good it hasn't got enough speed or torque this one is uh, a Mac one from B&Q would you believe done it got it all all our way through Ruby's project project Ruby and it's doing all right it's fits a little bit bent and the belts fly off now and again but I'm just gonna run it till the motor burns out I'm gonna get a Makita one I think so there we go that's looking quite good quite impressed with that repair a little bit more dressing up on it And a little bit more dressing up. Round to the front, let's get it clean. Looks pretty good. There's no more holes in that piece of metal. I mean, it was on its last legs, really. If it had been left a few years longer, I think that would have just gone. Okay, back to that front section. Now you can see I'm pointing out where I'm going to take a strip of metal and I'm going to use that to cut, there's that damage, I'm touching the damage there we're going to take a slice out like a belt, a thin strip I'm going to use that to make the profile cut one mil on again, just to the right is the flat wheel our gloves on and there's our section cut off we're going to hook that over the area to cut off on the donor section but we're going to allow a one mil tolerance so we're going to shift the metal just a little bit I say a little bit it's going to be one mil forward so that you cut off a little bit more than what you need which hopefully allows for a, uh, a fully butted up um, join which will hopefully follow the profile so that there's less spacing and plugging to do, less uh, bridging with your welder to try and fill in gaps or trying to put in bits of metal because you've overcut or undercut. Sorry, if you've undercut, if you've overcut, overcut, you'll be overlapping. So I use that profile to copy the cut that I've done, and the idea will be when I offer up the piece of metal off the donor, it will land in the right place. So you'll see me shift it across a little bit. To, to compensate we'll shift it back a little bit okay clamp it in position so I can get the marks on I go a little bit to the right so because I don't a piece of metal to the left so I'll move that disc to the right by one mil or one blade depending on what blade you've got if you're cutting you know me on a one mil I wouldn't really cut on anything more less uh, more than that so there's the thickness of the disc watch these because they can uh, slice straight through your fingers so you really need to be very familiar with your your angle grinder and comfortable with it and confident with it before you start using slitted discs so across there to allow for that on the line and we'll strike the line with a marker then clamp that in position and we've got a good reference point that one of those holes for the earthing wire there that dished hole that's the earthing wire hole for the uh, headlamps at the front if we shift it across to the right and then make our cut then offer it up and see what we've got check in with the VIN plate that gives us an idea of spacing as well because the VIN plate rivets have to land in the right place and there's our cut looking quite parallel just initially as I'm watching this playback so round we go to have a look at the other areas where it all fits together I'm just lining that little tag up with the tag on the front of the c-section making sure that the aprons um, really got uh, the correct position which it looks like it has again there's the VIN tag just showing that we can get the rivet spacing right so that all the relative positions 
just a handy little tip uh, to where I cut it um, bridging it across with the uh, VIN tag so there we are underneath we go just an overview probably the end of the evening for me on this one I just slowly review the work of the day and take the camera slowly round so that uh, I can sort of process and view the day's works so that section in and looking all right taking the camera a little bit higher up as the rust slowly starts to disappear and bit by bit Bramble's front end starts to take shape and the rust is bashed and pushed back we've got to start from the front and push back it's a long road but we're going to have to do it so much to do we fade out and then a new day starts I would I would say just think it was the next day here because I'm just I'm, I'm a couple of days behind with the narration so we're getting ready to finally fit that corner piece I would have thought we're going to go and grab it yeah there we go we grabbed that it's the day after this so off I go get that and we need to start cleaning that up now there's a lot to do to clean that up I don't enjoy cleaning it up ripping all the bits of old metal off it there see and getting it back to shape now look at it we need look at that little drain this is a sort of drain bowl behind the headlights where water would, would fall out onto the floor of the car onto the floor the way out of the car it's a sort of run down on your apron the inner apron the water gathers on the inner apron and, and rolls down out of the front so it's damaged there they always rust there a lot of cortinas uh, have that problem so we need to chop that out our super duper 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 wire wheel you can get them from Aldi I think the thing is watch out for the lower quality ones because they just fall to pieces get a reasonable quality twisted wire not just a wire one but the twisted one you'll see what I mean like I think they're called knotted very stiff bristles uh, arranged as a sort of twisted round format as opposed to just those brass ones they'll just fall to pieces they can't they can't take the stick do we take all the paint off well it's not really necessary at this stage but we definitely want to take paint off around any welded areas because it makes your job so much easier when weld is just clean metal I mean that's the best thing about welding is when you've got clean metal nothing worse than when you're hitting rust and it's it's kicking back at you okay what do we reckon then spinning it round having a look at the situation good clean piece of metal with the inevitable damage that you'd get with a, a 40 plus year old car even though it has been in Portugal most of its life shaping roughly the first idea I'm going to do this freehand it would be probably advisable to make a cardboard template but I like to sometimes just grab a piece of metal and just t take it with me and just work as I go we're going to make sure that we leave a little bit of spare metal on this to fold up which creates a little inner tang which mounts to the headlamp bezel plates you'll see that later one mil disc down our famous one mil disc cutter on the Makita again straight down we're going to do a couple of lines get that metal out just working it out where to go I'm just having a Peroni whilst I narrate this for you guys it's my evening time now slices through nice great all on the floor just on a bit of uh, hardboard or sterling board you can see the twisted knot wire wheel top left they're great watch your fingers you do get used to using you get confident with the one mil but there'll always be the day when you can slip you don't get complacent with them but they are good for just coming in freehand people use tin snips as well not for this job but uh, for cutting metal I think tin snips are good aviation snips are good left and right handed aviation snips you need when you're actually doing real precision uh, cutouts this is just freehand free form we're going to get a tack in the corner and then start to let it follow the shape itself and we'll bash and hammer as we go I'm just hitting the tripod there look at it's uh, 
the tripod's magnetically mounted to the car, so I would have hit the car there. In comes attack. Have we got an earth strap onto the piece of metal? No, we haven't. Schoolboy error. Connect the earth strap up and then we can get attack on. I think I mentioned before that I always vac up at the end of the day as well. See all them little bits of metal everywhere and all that. And as I said, the next day, if you come into the workshop and you've at least give it a go at tidying up, for me anyway, I don't know about you, let me know what you think about if I'm over clean. <laughs> Some people might think I go mad with a hoover. I'm not, I'm not OCD, OCD, clean, clean. In goes our tack. It's position two on the welder. Don't ask me the wire speed. I'm still learning. Look how the metal's longer than the front because that's because that's going to later on fold back and make a, a mount tang and the mount tangs are where the front headlamp mounting bezel panel fits so it came in handy to do that quite enjoy this kind of work didn't like cleaning the metal up well it's once you get going it's not too bad I suppose but made a lot of uh, fine red red dust the workshop soon gets dusty as well it was a clean workshop that but my whole plan with the workshop it was built for this operation and whilst it is high spec when the job's uh, over and the car shell's done we'll get a, a redecorate and a clean down and the painted floor will be done again I have kept a spare set of paint for the floor I only did uh, I did two coats I always intended to do three coats okay couple more tacks space them out so it doesn't warp feeling for the lines feeling for it to be flush and we can see we're already starting to take the shape of the car there's a piece to cut down there clamp on just holding it in place and here's a little there uh, I don't know what what that is it's a piece of solid iron anyway and I use it just to prop and bash and bang a good thing to have and I've not got one yet is a little sandbag um, leather, I think it's a leather bag you get with sort of sand in it, like a bean bag, and you can freeform shapes on it and hammer and bash uh, shapes out on the sandbag. They're quite good. I'm not mega big on metal forming. I do admire people who can uh, freeform shape metal. I do really have a lot of respect for the people who can do that. Um, it's, I like to have a go, but. A more modular type thing. I like to just get a module and fit it to another module and connect a module to another module and build in blocks. I think that's taking shape all right. There's the earth strap connected bottom left. More welds to go in. Holding the torch just at that angle. I think I might have blown through there, which is why I was pointing to the camera and trying to chase back on myself. This can happen, does happen. I think we've got it. I might have been wrong, maybe that didn't happen. Is it taking shape, guys, do you think? I'm gonna get there, aren't we? Oops. For the TNT. Another sip on my beer there. Now, will we get it? This could be one of those clips you speed up, perhaps. Apologies if this is dragging a little bit, this clip, but there's not much metal forming in the films. Flatten down that corner. This technique's working. Now, that's just fell into the gap I've just cut, so that's all right. That's worked. Sometimes your welding visor will hit the the camera. You may spatially be aware of your own head. It's rare that you're, you're spatially aware of your flipped up helmet. 
quite often do that check in I've been recently learning the technique of doing continuous welding I've really enjoyed that pulsing the the uh, lance or the the welding torch and then pulling the uh, pool along I've done quite well doing that recently I've enjoyed that Welding's great as long as, as I said the metal's clean. I don't enjoy welding on rust. I don't think anyone does. Sometimes it's unavoidable and it, the rust will pop and crackle at you. And it doesn't make it enjoyable and the sound's not as good. It just doesn't feel right. I've so often, because we're all doing classic cars, aren't we? Or we've done classic cars. Or we're interested in classic cars. And they're they come hand in hand, rust and classic cars seem to be hand in hand, that's the whole thing about restoration. Okay, we're carrying on. A little bit of a woggle left and right on the lance. This is not a welding instruction video, as you probably guessed. It's, it's Cortina City trying to get a car that's a colander back to something like and my old plan is to get the front end done in a relatively short space of time but to a high level of quality to give me a morale boost and also just to if you think about it, the front end of the car is about a third of the shell so if you can get that done within a month have that whole front end built I think that gives you a little bit of breathing space Obviously there's lots to do and you've seen how bad the shell is if you've not just have a playback through some of the previous videos perhaps episodes three and four and you'll see that after it came out of the dip it, it revealed all the true rust. Some of the rust on the bulkhead had been caused from the inside out not the outside in and that's to do with sound deadening cloth felt holding moisture against the bulkhead that's what kills most Cortina bulkheads is the uh, insulating cloth the felt develops a leak on the scuttle area soaks the cloth then that rots from the inside out on so many Cortinas have got uh, leaking scuttles and uh, screens okay using that end of the hammer I'm just going to sh try and shape that in it needs a bit of a concave shape I hope that's right and it's not convex well it depends which way you flip it <laughs> so I'm knocking it now that would be nice on the sandbag now when you're knocking that bit so well now to clean up let's clean it up a little bit more at the front let's hope we can make this look half decent okay so perhaps some of that you can see some of the continuous welds bottom corner so I'm getting better so bear with me if you've any welding tips I'm always interested in hearing them but what can learn better than practice or what can you know can be better than practice you, you memory always always um, stores it better if you have to learn it the hard way it's all well and good being told I mean that does work and I'm always open for advice but um, just point us in the right direction and I'll, I'll have a good go finger file in very gently because you'll thin out as I said that many times in this last couple of films great thing with a finger file this one you can get into crevices starting to look something like right now we're blending yeah I'm looking quite good I haven't seen that for a few days not bad you can always give it a skim and don't forget the car's going to have its, its share of fill but in the right places and bear in mind that's a water trap should we lead that perhaps it might be better that's leadings uh, on the, uh, the to do list I've got to say I've been uh, watching some leading videos
offering it up. What do you think, guys? It's in the right area. With a skim or a lead, you'd lose that completely. Fit it in again. Second trial fit. Starting to blend its way in. And I do like this line here. Okay, we're overcut. Just see yeah, that triangle at the top. A little bit. That's not bad considering. And then I've left oversized a little bit so we mark with a, with a sharpie there and just trim that in it's best to have more metal than uh, too little so you can always just keep trimming back and filing back till it fits all the way down that slam are we ready to weld this in yet not sure looking good there I do like that fit wide at the bottom but by the time I'd spaced it out it actually opened up wide at the front of the line just in front of the VIN tag there see it you can just see that gap but I'd rather have that in that position a very easy place to fix it right just using my very thin chisel spot weld splitting chisel to check that it runs flush and uh, there's many intersections look how many intersections you've got to get there and we seem to have it I've got a metal dolly behind the ball pane, holding it with my other hand as I just get these panels to go through. So we're getting them through before we put any more tacks in. And there we are on the other side. A couple more tacks just to to progress we don't put them too close together initially just so that you don't get warping effect and it tends to ripple and you, you lock that ripple in position with your weld so you want to just space them out then keep checking and tapping checking and keep you could close the welds close in on the job and and they sort of encircle it and close in until you're down to the fine points and it can't move anymore after that and then it's a question of filling in between the the uh, tacks that you've done you can even get to a point where you can do continuous weld between the tacks because it's not going to warp I have the wood underneath here just to put, um, my, my patio floor is going to get hit I know that but I try and minimize the damage I think we'll go for a bit of a ski now if I recall I'll actually lose the well, I think me and Jim, we go, we're off to Cortina and we're going skiing, I think, here. That's it. I'm saying to Jim, look for a bit of a ski. I can't ski and I don't want to ski. I'll break my legs. Smash my foot on a roller skate once. Okay, grill in to make sure that spacing's good. Why not put the grill in? That checks the grill screw holes as well. Now one was about two mil out from off from fully on centre, but I can live with that because the clips move from left to right, so the grill would fit. There was a slight difference on it. Bear in mind that the slam panels had a bash as well, as well. You just don't know really what's gone on. But I'm just, you know, I'm wary of that crash on that in that corner. I never noticed it when I got the car out of the field. So we're, we're looking all right there. I've got that. Uh, front upper valance on as well just to check the leg spacing on the sh chassis starting to look like it's getting back what we're looking at is just reversing the rust so we're going to have a front end that's rust free and pretty solid and all my welds I'm hoping I'll be able to blend them in 95% with metal and very minimal uh, filler on it a little bit of a slow motion pan round I think I've got the camera running the, the editing suites put this into slow motion so I could do the narration I was planning that when I, when I edited it because what I do is I edit the video for narration purposes anyway when I'm doing a narration type one I have done recently is I'll, I'll edit and some sections will be put into slow speed so that I can talk along and the clip doesn't change too quick so you can stay on topic and it stays on uh, frame in this case it was to talk about the grill that's that hole if you, if you looked it's actually not focused but if you looked it'll be, it'll be a mil or two off 
you can see it the screw would get it and that's where the screw's been because you can see the dent look see there just there but that's okay the screws still go through that and that's where the screw's been anyway so it could have been like that I mean I don't know their tolerances weren't very close but I must admit all the Cortinas I've worked on have all been similar laid out similar even the spot welds even the spot weld they must use spot weld jigs because even the spot welds are the same on all the cars although that Portuguese one had some MIG welding on the battery tray I mentioned so it's nice when you start getting to the final part of the of the build at the front end it'd be good for us to get these chassis legs welded in position and get the suspension clip that could be part uh, six getting this suspension clip and finalizing the front end so we'll get the suspension clip in next once we've and then we can use that suspension clip I say suspension clip it's the full front end um, clip cradle we call it a cradle we'll need that to get these cradle mount points welded onto the uh, chassis in a, in a chassis legs but obviously we've got to finish that welding there on that repair piece so we just keep mocking checking measuring again checking that it's plumb checking that it's level in the camera goes on the zoom rarely use the zoom just showing some of the tags great thing about MIG and you can go over things if you're not happy clean back remig clean back remig they are good clean welds there's no impurities in those welds and not uh, they've not um, you know gone out and eat, uh, spatter on them or anything and that's coming to the end so I hope you've enjoyed this part of the film that's episode 5 I, I mentioned the next few films will be hardcore well I say that until we built the shell it's all going to be hardcore welding that's the whole point so we'll catch you in part 6 again thanks for the comments episode 4 did quite well technically on YouTube but a lot of people seem to enjoy the, the tech films and um it's a little bit longer this film hope you don't mind it being a bit too long join us in part six when you see us finalize that front end and uh, we'll catch you soon over and out from pc cortina city good night At Super Value, we believe in value with great offers. Like mix and match any 3 for 10 euro on a selection of meats like beef wins, quarter pounders and award winning Super Queen sausages. Half time. The general idea is that there will be some kind of chemical that could act in one of few ways that can mask the pepper in a food. For example, it could block your better taste receptors, so kind of like a silver seal of them, so you don't experience the bitterness. Alternatively, you could sit down tonight with a ridiculous salad and then eat bitter gourd, followed by a glass of Fernet Branca. To chef and writer Jennifer McGregor, that would be a vodka act of taste defiance. <laughs> the book is a mission because we need bitter. We need bitter for our health. But we also need bitter for what we're eating. Because it's so much less interesting to eat. another level of complexity. You don't actually miss it until it's gone. And once it's gone, I'm scared we won't be able to get it back. Jennifer McClagan. Now the return of our series of... And once it's gone, I'm scared we won't be able to get it back. Jennifer McClagan. Now the return of our series of... Gone. Gone. Don't actually miss it until it's gone. Don't actually miss it.